Five rounds of Muay Thai kickboxing in our main event with truly an international flavor. Mr. John McKimi, the king, thank you for the three times Hamilton Casino Bar Cup. Up for grabs. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenger on my left occupying the blue corner. As Peter Bishop said at the top of the show, he came in at the 11th hour. He's always ready. He's a big gun on the Australian circuit. Ten professional fights, six wins, four losses. Tipping the scales at 85 kilograms with Team Thai. The Thai brothers in the corner, Raphael Jordan with George Ellis. 85 kilograms, his weight, green, red, with a touch of gold. He is the technician, Auckland's Daniel Thai. Thai. And across the ring, he's travelled across the world. He also spent seven and a half hours in flight from Perth, Western Australia. Take that into account. In fact, he came then 2,000 kilometres north of Perth, Caratha, Perth, across Auckland, Hamilton, with his mentor, WMC, Perth legend, seaman extraordinaire, Bill Seth, from the Monk Corn Muay Thai Gym in Perth, Western Australia. 79.70 kilograms, three times he's been to Hamilton. He loves the place like his own family, with Chana thinking of what he's doing across the world. He's had 25 bouts, 21 wins, five losses. He is the reigning and defending John McKimmy, Hamilton Casino Bar champion. Would you welcome Eugene Boom Boom Eckleboom. We're in purple and gold trunks. Albert, it's all yours. Let's get it on. On the site where legends are made, the Hamilton Peter, Stadium. Peter, I, I think this Carly Simon was thinking of, uh, of Howard when she sang Nobody Does It Better because you yeah, just guys, don't get anybody nice better than Howard. <laughs> it's just a great, it, it's, just a, it's just an honour to have this, okay, this great ringmaster here. He's... I'll bring him out on every show. Um, crew. John it, it, will go I can sit here and watch him all night. <laughs> Absolute silence. Well, of course, that cup down there, what uh, they're all fighting for, Albert about to pick it up. And Eugene said, get your hands off that, that's mine. But what can we expect? You, you've been uh, talking to the, the team from Aussie. What, what can you expect? How will Eugene fight this fighter? Will he um, approach it any different because he's fighting a heavier opponent? I think uh, if Eugene uh, fights the same way as he fought last time, I think he's, he's going he's gonna to put up a great fight. He's going to use those long knees of his. Um, he's going to trap Daniel in the corner, and he's going to use the knees. So it, this is a full elbow fight too, so you're probably going to see some fireworks with the elbows. Uh, what do you think with uh, Daniel? What would be their fight plan, uh, Tony? Well, in, a, in his two most recent fights, he's fought different fights. Uh, he beat Eddie Tongalahi with leg kicks. Now, uh, Eddie, a very strong leg kicker, but uh, Daniel gave everything back that night and, and uh, ended up, uh, I think Eddie broke a bone in his foot. Now, um, in his next fight, he ended it with a big right hand when he caught Ivan Walker. <coughs> Excuse me, I think, um, I think the danger for Daniel is the height difference and the, what you've mentioned of the big knees. Daniel, um, at five foot eight, isn't be a, going to be able to match Eugene, who is renowned as a grappler and a kneer. So I, I can see this fight working out two ways. As you say, Eugene's going to try and get Daniel in the corner. Um, Daniel's got an awesome left hook. Um, it sat Sean Sullivan down in a boxing fight just recently. So. Daniel's going to try and kill the legs, uh, keep away from uh, Eugene, and work the hands later on in the fight. Mm. That's my opinion. I, I, I feel with uh, Eugene is very, very fit. Bill trains all his boys, and, and, and they always fit. I think, uh, you know, the later rounds might tell for Daniel. I'm not too sure, but um, just seeing Eugene, Eugene fight on a few occasions, uh, he's very, very strong again in the later rounds, just like Chopper. 
Well, I think you could be right there. In the first Ivan Walker fight, Daniel led over the first uh, part of the fight, but tied extremely badly towards the end. And I think if um, Eugene can get the grapple going and keep away from the, the big left hand and the big right one because he's got knockout power in both, um, that could be a wearing down factor. Yeah, I, know he went, I know he went the 12 rounds with Sean Sullivan, but boxing's completely different than uh, kickboxing. Right. Main event. Like I say, the grappling just uh, tires you out, Julie especially Warren in the latest, and later Mr. rounds. You know. Cal Cowley. Mr. John Taylor is your official But uh, for once, I've seen Daniel round very, one. very focused. Look, he looks very, very focused. Yes, he certainly does. And uh, as I say, a fighter on a roll is often very hard to stop. Yeah. Eugene hasn't been in the ring as um, often as Daniel has just over the last few months. So, um, you know, that could help. We're going to see if Eugene's got any ring rust training away there, 2,000 miles north of Perth. Perth uh, so uh, if he's got any ring rust, Daniel could take advantage of that. But there we go, the grapple, and it looks like Daniel's not going to have any part of the grapple. He's going to go to ground, and that could be a good tactic for him. Yes. Just a feel-out round here. Well, Eugene, uh, not showing any effects of being out of the ring for some time. He's dodging those big leg kicks, which is a good idea because uh, they are very powerful. Yeah, look at the legs on him. Look at it. It's got those... <laughs> Those oh, huge they're, legs here, yeah, uh, they're tree trunk legs he's got. Um, any prop in the country would be happy to have legs like that. And Daniel again coming off a fantastic win against Nick Carr. Uh, that fight was in Melbourne, Tony. Yeah, definitely. I saw that fight on on tape. Um, also saw the Gurkhan Oskan fights on tape, and I thought Daniel actually won it uh, against Gurkhan on one occasion with leg kicks. And oh, there goes a big right hand. The uh, the fight's working out pretty much as we said it would. Uh, Eugene happy to go in and do the grappling. Daniel wants no part of the grappling, and he's he's immediately going down to uh, to the ground. A little bit messy here in yeah. round number one, and uh, just a feel out round, you know, just uh, getting to know each other. But again, I've, I've seen the focus on Daniel's uh, in Daniel's face, he looks very, very focused for this fight. But again, uh, that Eugene's renowned for his uh, real smart tactics in the ring. I mean, uh, he does everything well, he moves well, well in the ring, he knows how to turn his boy around. Well, he's got plenty of power, too. Uh, yes, he, very deceptible, very deceptible. Yeah, he uh. He broke Joe uh, White's rib here last year and uh, with the knees. So, you know, uh, when he gets you in that hold, um, it's very hard to get away from. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. The only thing um, that I've noticed in the past with, with Daniel is, um, is the holding and, 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 and the dropping to the ground. You know, that can make, can make the fight look uh, very, very ugly sometimes, you know. Yeah, can do, yeah. Um, but, but again, that's that's just Daniel Ty. I mean, he does that uh, in, in, in several of his fights, fights that I've seen in the past. How did you see that fight, uh, Tony? Uh, well, uh, 